Right, in recent days we have seen the release of the Ping I-59, probably the most expensive iron that they have ever released. It fits into probably a very niche uh, marketplace. It's very much aimed at the player's market. And for me, one thing it pits itself against straight away is the tailor-made P770. So we're going to get out on the course here at Wallasey Golf Club. We're going to play some five iron, seven iron, nine irons of both clubs alongside one another. And I'm going to give you my opinion on the performance of both, first of all, but then trying to find out quite why the i59 is priced in the position that it is right now. And is it worth that extra money than the likes of this P770? Right, so one of the interesting head-to-head -head comparisons for me is that the, at the longer end of the bag, that's where the difficulties are going to show and perhaps the differences. So like I said, 5-iron from the i59 very much becomes a, uh, a blade-like looking club. You can see there is a difference, even though this P770 is this kind of uh, sits between a, a pure blade and something that's got a bit of meat in the back of it, you can see those differences when you sit these two at a dress. So the five iron becomes a little bit worrying, let's say, with I-59 in your hand for a player of my capability. But what was really interesting, you'll see a number of shots today in and around this golf course today with every iron, is two five irons off the tee on the third. Not massively different in terms of their strike, but in terms of where they finish was huge. Now these fairways are rolling, so there's gonna be a lot of this is, where, where it's, compared to where it's landed and where it's finished, is obviously gonna impact a lot on how firm these fairways are. But that was the ball hit with the I-59. The ball further on in the middle of the fairway, and it must be another sort of 50 yards on, so it has run on a bit, don't get me wrong, but that's the P770. The ball flight was also completely different. And I think, again, you're looking at levels at where you play at, but I was so shocked at the difference between the two. When I got up here, I was so shocked because off the club face, didn't feel that different. And just to put it into perspective, in the seven irons, uh, which I've got in terms of a barometer, 33 degrees on the P770, 34 degrees on the I-59. So I'm assuming that'll run through into the five iron and through the bag, just a degree or two difference. But that's astonishing to see such a massive difference in where those two have finished. Now one of the big things about both these sets of irons is how they look because I think they're probably two of the best looking irons on the market and I think everybody's up the game in terms of the way irons look right now but like I said these are stunning but in different ways they've got each of them have got that sort of satin finish which has been uh, it's more prevalent in that i-59 that's that all over satin finish uh, the P770s that you're looking at now got that little bit of shiny chrome and again probably just appeals to me a little bit more so but I think in terms of shelf appeal, it would probably divide opinion. I don't think you can argue that both Ping and TaylorMade have done a fantastic job aesthetically. It's just going to be down to you as an individual which uh, one catches your eye. But I'd be interested in comments down below. Uh, from your perspective, which one is it? I-59 or P770? Right, I think we'll almost dismiss hole three, you know, because uh, clearly quality of strike wasn't the same because of it, two five irons off the tee on four. This is uh, the I-59 just held up in the rough and the P770 was right down the center stripe, to be honest, and it will have had the benefit of uh, the rule of the fairway, whereas this one won't have. So I think to be fair, 
like I said, quality of strike clearly wasn't the same on that hole three. The difference was, if I'm honest with you, they felt the same uh, as hole three, but clearly distance-wise they travelled dis uh, differently. The ball flight was noticeably different. You'll see uh, from the um, shot traces that we've put in that the ball flight on the I-59 was uh, slightly higher, even though, like I said, only slightly uh, weaker in loft. So not a lot to split them two shots at all. Right, two five irons played there from the fairway. One pretty good shot with the uh, I-59 and uh, turn the one over a little bit on the P717. It's one thing that I've just mentioned to uh, our camera lady is that I certainly find at the moment, in terms of uh, whether or not there's, there's a little bit more offset of the dress visually from the P770, I'm not too sure how much it is in terms of uh, millimetres um, and whether or not it's just a mental thing, but I do seem to be turning the ball over a little bit more with that P770. That's something that's been noticeable on all shots that I've hit. Sort of similar, if you like, and felt really good strikes. I've turned them over just a little bit and that's uh, been noticeable on a few occasions. But anyway, um, We've put, we've turned up where the uh, where the A59 landed, and I've just pulled this one out of the rough, which is where uh, our five iron finish of the P770, and I'm going to hit, which is kind of half a shot, and I love these kind of things to see whether or not we've got any kind of feel. I think definitely from a player's perspective, if you're going to go to this kind of club, one of the things you'll be looking for is greater control and be able to um, sort of flight the ball differently, control the ball a lot more, so it's not. So if you go to the other end of the spectrum, not that super game improvement where you're not looking for that whatsoever. So we're gonna, we're gonna try half a shot here and see if we can uh, make green in regulation with two five irons and a nine on this par five. That's not enough and I didn't mind the control element of it. It felt really good, I've gotta say that. I've, I've been impressed out on the course with the feel of the uh, I-59s or sound, whatever you want to call it. I uh, didn't quite give it enough on in that instance. Let's try that again with the... Obviously learnt a bit from the first shot. I think we're not learnt enough because I think that's very similar. Yeah, it is. Very similar. Well, almost identical, not quite enough. I think that you can definitely tell there's a difference between the feel of the two clubs. The P770 is still got, and I mention it every review I've done of the P770s and 790s, it has got that little clicky sound. And I think that in fairness on that I-59, it does feel a little bit softer. It was more noticeable there in that shorter iron with that pair of nine irons. So the normal thing about aesthetics is uh, it's every much what you like to see on your eye and uh, they kind of, everything's gradual in the set in terms of both of them, in terms of what you see in a dress with the nine irons. The P770 is that slightly chunkier profile, sort of um, heel to toe, not a lot to split them at all. In fact, looking down on these two right now, the P770 looks a slightly shorter profile, but the top line is thicker slightly more higher um, toe area in my eye on the i-59 as well um, it's just literally what suits you on the eye but i don't think whatever category you put yourself in and we know these i-59s are really aimed at that niche um, players market low handicap market i don't think that either of those if you if you were, if you class yourself as that kind of player what you're looking for i don't think you can be off put by either of those um, at nine iron seven iron i'm going to just have a quick glance at these um again very little to split them the top line is the thing yet again but both sit really nice at a dress i would say that visually there looks a little bit more offset on that p770 a slightly more neutral face on that i-59 and then in the longer end of the bag which is where you notice the difference for me that's where that p770 becomes a little bit thicker um no real change in that i-59 from the top line that offset again seems more noticeable. You seem as though the hosel just meets the club face on the I-59 with no offset whatsoever. And it's that higher sort of sharper toe um, on that I-59. It, it really is whatever suits your eye, but either way, I don't think you will be massively off put. Whatever category you put yourself in, whatever you see at a dress with either of those, I think you'd be more than happy with. 
Well, we've just picked the clubs up and I've just said what everything looks like um, from a dress. But what is really interesting, when I did some side-on profiles, I really noticed that in my right hand is the I-59. Um, and just how much bulk and mass there is in, th in terms of thickness behind the club, um, behind the ball at a dress. And that's the one that quite uh, threw me a little bit. You wonder where this sort of help and forgiveness is coming from, what they're packing into this I-59. But you can clearly see... It's a fairly thick profile, but they're doing a real good job of hiding that um, behind, the, uh, behind the club face. And certainly from the top line, you would never have guessed that the I-59 has got more mass behind it than the P770. Now, it could be argued that this head-to-head -head is maybe not the same category. Some people would say that P770 has still got that little bit more of appeal to the sort of a broader market, let's say, and the i59 is very much that specialist blade. I don't know, I'm not so sure. And the reason I wanted to bring them out on the course is to find out the differences. I'm not sure that we sort of have, really, um, because I don't think there's a great deal to split up, if I'm honest with you. I would say that, if anything, you're talking about aesthetics and sound. I don't think that in terms of performance wise, there's, there's an awful lot between them. And I think, like I said, when you take into account that slight loft difference, then yet yeah, the i59, I think launched just a little tad higher, but again, that just could have been down to the strikes that I put on them. Um, maybe again, just that little bit of offset difference, but again, could be down to the quality of strikes that I just happened to coincidentally put on the P717 compared to the i59. You've then got the sound issue. I do think the i59 surprised me a little bit in how much out here on the course they sounded better than the P770s, and particularly uh, in that sort of shorter end, that 99. I did prefer it there. And again, the big difference is the profile. It is noticeable. And again, what do you want from a from a golf club? And I think for me, on only answering this as a personal level. And this is very much uh, wh where I'm at right now with my own irons, what I'm looking for. I loved playing the 9-iron and perhaps the 7-iron in the I-59s. That uh, smaller profile, really neat um, top line. I love that. And I feel as though at my level I can cope with that. But then when you get down to the 5-iron, I prefer to have the P770 in my hands where it just looks a bit meatier and it just gives you that air of confidence. So I think, like I said, I can only answer that one very much on my own personal level. But they look fantastic in the bag, it can't be argued, whichever set you uh, happen to go for. And then obviously, that final thing is that price. I think they've had a bit of a backlash in terms of the price of these i-59s and what I read in the previous uh, comments. But they're saying that this is a quality build and there's a lot going on in there, it's very much uh, a big player. But that's up for you to decide whether or not you want to splash that extra cash on these i-59s. But like I said, they're two cracking sets of irons. Anyway, that's me done. Thank you for Wallacey Golf Club for having us here this morning for uh, doing a bit of filming. It's been absolutely superb, as you've probably seen. Uh, as ever, your feedback, like I said, which would you be trying, which are you going for? Uh, hit that like button. And I'll see you all soon, because I'm going to follow this up with another video that's going to be very much a, almost a duplication. But I'm going to put these i-59s up against the i-500 because I think, again, there are a lot of similarities. I'm going to make no sense here, but there are a lot of differences as well. So make sure you tune in and watch that one.